it's uh, time to start looking at the down scan to compare that uh, with the, the new HD versus the old 3-in-1. So here's my setup. On the port side I have the 3-in-1 uh, transducer and as we walk around to the other side here you'll see that uh, on the starboard side I have the new HD transducer. There's a link in the description for these mounts Air transducer shield and saver. Here's my setup for the video and what I found is that I had way too much vibration, way too much uh, distortion. You'll see that in these pictures. So what I did is I did a sonar logging. You can see the log popping up in the windows there. And so we're just going to roll through. This is the setup I'm using. Okay, the uh, three, old 3-in-1 three doesn't allow you to select frequency. We're going to run the 700 kilohertz on the new HD and that will be equivalent to what's running, uh, similar to ru what's running on the, uh, the old 3-in-1. Now the, uh, the new HD lets you do 700 kilohertz or 1.2 megahertz. So here's some of the, uh, the areas we're scrolling through. This uh, area happens to be the area that's way over top, or over near the dam there, which is the, uh, if you looked at the video I did on the retake, it's called what I call the sunken island. So you can see the fish reveal is turned on. And again, you can notice there's a lot of glare. You can see me there in the background. Uh, it's It was pretty cold that day. It was right, I think, 38, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's why I'm pretty well bundled up. I mean, I've got six layers on. Um, it's pretty cold. But if you start looking at these details, you can see, at least in my eye perception, I'm seeing a lot more detail on the down scan for the HD versus the down scan in the old 3-in-1. I thought the old 3-in-1 down scan detail is pretty darn good, but uh, but it looks like the uh, the HD is a little bit better, a little bit crisper. Again, this is running 700 kilohertz. I do want to do some more experimentation later on with the 1.2 megahertz stuff uh, to see if I can get even crisper detailed. Most of the stuff I'm showing you is between 80 and 20 feet, but the majority of it's in 50, 60 feet. And this is just an artifact of where we are on the river. Uh, the river tends to be fairly deep in this section, at least uh, the areas that, that I'm trying to scan for you guys. So you can see the difference in the details. I mean, the bottom line definition, if you look right near the Fisherville area where it's uh, yellow going to the blue, that stuff you can see a little bit more detail in the HD stuff. Again, that's that's kind of cons convincing me. There's there's something different and something good that's going on. And I think the difference is is the chirp trans capability of the new HD transducer. You can see on the left hand side there's a whole lot of shake there. And what happens is every if I move the boat way too fast, everything just starts shaking. It gets really really goofy. So. So what we're going to do in a, in a little bit is we're eventually going to go into our log files. And the nice thing about the log files, when I originally did the log files, the log files were done for the side scan stuff, but as a part of the logs, I actually get everything there. And so now you're seeing the logs that were just pretty much what I consider free data. And that was nice because I also have sonar data as well. And this is using those reef master. So here's that bridge that we looked at, the old sunken bridge. Basically, I think it's the old Route 131 bridge that they blew up and just sunk down there at the Marcina intake. And you can see there's some pretty good detail there. So, so let's just let this thing scroll through. Feel free to stop this video at any time and, and look at the detail. Again, I, I'm, I'm seeing to me, at least on my perception, is that I'm getting a lot more detail on the HD versus the old 3-in-1. Uh, you'll notice some, some white lines at the bottom. That's from the way that the transducer is ranging. And you normally wouldn't see that on your screen unless you're changing depths really quickly. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why ReefMaster was doing that for me, but apparently there must have been missing data in the log file for those depths. And, and again, this is pretty uh, obvious at this point. I was thinking about just adjusting the screen as we roll along, but I really want to let you see the differences. You can see where the old 3-in-1 is actually stepping a little bit different as far as the step goes. 
Uh, you can see the HD on the left hand side there goes all the way down to the depth and then steps up twice whereas the 3-in-1 doesn't do that. This is our grass bed and you can see I can see a lot more grass, a lot more detail and it just to me it looks a little bit better. I, I believe that I'll be able to pick out a lot better fish or easier to pick out fish in this piece. So as we continue to look at this uh, grass bed, you'll see where it's starting to drop off. And I've got a lot of clips in here that show you the drop offs. And, and the reason I do that is the fish like to hang on these edges. And I, I believe that the more detail you can see on those edges, the more chance you have of actually seeing the fish. And, that, and that's very, very important as far as if you want to find fish. Uh, so we're coming up on another edge, you can see the new transducer appears, at least to me, there's more detail there. The little spikes there seem to be a little more prominent. So we're coming back up to the top of this uh, ridge line. That dropped down, like I say, 80 feet roughly. Now we're back up at the roughly 20 feet or so. So as we're looking at this grass area here, this you can see that hump there. I'm seeing a lot more detail in the grass there, and that's a really I, I, that's probably an artifact of that chirp. So now we're coming up on, this is the area where we had those two spikes. And this is actually something I didn't have on the side scan earlier because it's kind of in, in a transition zone between the grass area and that mid-river hump I had. And this is just something I drove over and accidentally found. And this is the type of thing you can do that if you have the uh, down scan turned on if you're not going too fast. Uh, again, this stuff down scan, side scan sends, tends to cut out at about yeah, roughly 10 miles an hour. So as long as you're under those speeds, you can get pretty good definition. So this is another one of those edges. This is coming up on that mid-river hump. And you can see it's, it's about the same here, although I see a little bit more on the HD than the, uh, the old three-in-one, especially in that lower, the deeper portion, the little hump there. And so we're rolling along here, a little bit more detail, again, better detail, you know, your chances of finding fish are, are better. But the advantage is when you got fish reveal, now what we don't see in these log files, there's no fish reveal capability. And that's okay because when you're actually seeing it on the boat, you'll see the fish reveal capability and therefore you'll see any fish hanging around. And so now we're coming into, we've got a little bit of a variable bottom here. We're going up and down. We've got that bump right there. And it looks like possibly an old road bed in the middle there between those humps. Or it could be even be an old, or could be even the old creek channels. Because uh, again, remember that this, this end, end of the river was fairly well dammed up and the water level raised up quite a bit.
coming up on another edge here. You can see again detail differences. Okay, here's another edge we're coming up on, but you can see the detail that we're seeing before we're coming up on this little hump here. And, and again, the important thing is that, I know it's getting to be repetitive on these edges, but again, that's where your fish tend to hold, especially like spotted bass, um, when they move up and down the walls down south, or other areas where like smallies will use those edges as transition points, basically hang behind that edge and then grab bait as it swims, goes through the current. So here we are coming up on the, the dam area, or what I call that underwater island, and these are some, t the old, what I've originally thought, I was looking at it, maybe these were like old trees, and those were basically the way they, they went out, but I believe those are actually rock piles and old pillars that they broke down. And if you look really carefully, you can actually see the old rebar stick in there and the way it broke out. And some of this has to do with angle of where you are. So we got the left one on the HD. Doesn't seem to show that ragged edge like the three and one does. And I believe that the three and one was just slightly to the left. Again, they're separated by roughly two feet. So we see a little bit more detail there. So now we're coming back up on, and this again is that we're seeing something at the near and the edge of the cone. We're seeing the face of it. Again, another pillar. We can see some stuff in the bottom there. To me, I keep seeing more and more detail on this HD stuff, which is telling me that it's probably worth, worth getting. So if you made it this far, uh, right now we're looking at some final clips and let's look at a little bit of a summary item. To me, I'm seeing more detail on the HD than the old 3-in-1. Again, we're running 700 kilohertz on the HD. The other one is, I believe, running 800, but you have no control over that. It used to be you could switch it manually. Now it does everything automatic. So you can still at least have manual control over the new HD transducer. Is the detail worth the difference? I think so, um, because again, a lot of times if you're in an area, heavy grass, scattered vegetation with rocks, you'll be able to see the rocks a whole lot better with the new HD. And again, I believe that's a lot, has, has a lot to do with the chirp capability. I've noticed that chirp uh, enhancement. So when I went from not traditional sonar to chirp sonar I could actually see better definition between like two if you had two fish stacked on top of each other 
with chirp you can see it better and again that's the same artifact that you're seeing over here with this down scan capability so if you made it this far i really truly appreciate you while uh, watching through the whole thing i hope between this video and the side scan video gives you enough data so you can at least make a, a an informed decision whether or not you want to upgrade to the hd transducer again if you got a live unit carbon unit uh, lead fs you need the s3100 module or if you have a pro unit you get this transducer with it anyway so uh, but again i appreciate you guys watching now uh, if you haven't subscribed yet i'd appreciate it and thanks yeah bye i appreciate you guys watching this please like and subscribe the video and subscribe to the channel thank you